What comes to mind when you think about BMWs? Personally, I imagine a small rear wheel drive car with a big straight six. The cars don't come smaller than the one series and the engines don't come bigger than the three litre turbocharged N55 in the BMW M135i. You're watching Shooting Break and we're gonna see what this BMW is like to drive. Now we're gonna start this review off around town because this is not a full fat M car. It's what we call M light. It's got three numbers after the M badge, which basically refers to the standard BMW denomination of you know 120i, 125i, this is a 135i. It has an M in front because of its performance. Performance kind of exceeds what you'd expect of a non-M BMW, but it's not quite the full fat M car. It is a normal BMW, a lovely normal BMW with an absolutely stonking engine and brilliant performance, but ultimately this is designed to be a lovely daily driver. It's designed to be a lovely daily driver that genuinely adds joy to your day-to-day -day commute. That distinction is key because an M car, a proper M car, it can do it all, you can daily it, but there is always a slight bit of compromise, not enough to get in the way, you would never kind of buy the car and think I'm not going to daily this because it's a terrible daily driver, but it's, they don't necessarily feel enjoyable to be in around town. Whereas these M lights as daily drivers, they are genuinely brilliant daily drivers. And that is partially owing to the fact that they're a bit more refined, they're a bit more comfortable, they're a bit quieter. The engines are set up for low end smooth torque and the gearboxes, you can get these with the ZF 8-speed automatic gearbox, which is what this has, and it's an absolutely brilliant gearbox, as we'll get to later on. So, what makes this such a great town car? This is, this car reminds me a lot of ways um, of the CLK 500 that we tested. It's a fairly opulent, luxurious package for its footprint. We've got big pillarless doors. We've got a lovely slick feel to the powertrain. It's short, it's stubby, it's easy to place around town. We've got fantastic steering lock compared to this car's rivals. This car's rivals are things like the Golf R, and all of its rivals are transverse mounted front wheel drive cars. This is a longitudinal engine rear wheel drive car. So you get a lot more space for the wheel wells, which means you get a lot more steering lock, which means you can do two point turns in town where you might have been a four point turn in something like a Golf. It also just feels special. It feels rear wheel drive just from sitting in it. I know that sounds strange, but the way your driving position is set out in a rear-wheel drive car, you tend to sit a bit lower in the car and a bit further back, a bit more in the middle of the car. It gives it the feeling of a big car in terms of its refinement and its driving feel, but in a small package. And there's just something really nice about that. This is the car that you genuinely enjoy hopping into to nip around town. And we're gonna to switch to the other part of daily driving, which is dual carriageways and motorways. This is a fantastic, motorway car. So first off, it's a small car, we've got a big car powertrain here. We've got a ZF 8-speed gearbox, and we've got this N55 3-litre turbocharged 320 horsepower engine that makes joining slip roads, overtaking people an absolute doddle. Not only is it an absolute doddle, but it's genuinely a joy to use. The ZF 8-speed gearbox is so well calibrated, the ratios are really well spaced, it kicks down really nice and quickly. That pull we just did was an Eco Pro and even then it's, su it's super responsive and it gets you to where you need to be. And the engine itself is so flexible. It pulls all the way from 1500 RPM all the way to 7000 RPM redline. It sounds fantastic while doing so. It's torquey, it's smooth. It's got enough traction that doesn't upset the car when you use full throttle at any given opportunity. I think that's great. And on top of that, we're cruising at 70 miles an hour. We're in, I'm just gonna confirm that we're in eighth gear and we're at 2000 RPM. 2000 RPM at a cruise in a car this small, that is brilliant. I can't get over that. It's so quiet and so refined for what it is. It, in my opinion, is way better than the equivalent Golf. The only thing is you do get a bit of tire noise, but that's to be expected on any kind of performance car because you've got quite big wide tires on these. Super refined mini GT of a car with a really special engine. 
And as you're going to find out, it's not necessarily the most dynamic car out there, but it's still bags of fun down the country lane. Anyway, we're going to cut to our top secret SB test route, and we're going to tell you what this car is really like to drive when the going gets tough. So, first off, we're in Sports Plus. We've got a real drive chassis here. Uh, it's an open diff, but it's got a kind of fake e-diff where it will nip at the calipers to keep an inside wheel spinning up too much. And we've got the dynamic traction control activated, which will give you a little bit of slip on the roads, not enough to actually make you have to give opposite lock, but it just lets you kind of play around with that rear wheel drive feeling a little bit more. So, let's just get this down to simulate kind of 30 mile an hour to NSL kind of pull and then not many mode but auto mode sports plus just kick down sounds absolutely brilliant pulls so well so so well just unbelievably well for a car like this it's so effortless getting this up to speed now we're going to get into you know the, the in-depth review of this car very shortly but the highlight points are this isn't perfect. The M135i is by no means a perfect car, but it's so much fun and it's so full of character that its flaws are quite forgivable. And you could almost argue they do kind of add to its character in the sense that it's a car that you need to think about how you drive it. You need to drive around its flaws. You can't just get in it and immediately get the best out of it. You need to learn it. You need to figure it out. You need to figure out what can and can't do. And as a long-term ownership proposition, there's a few very easy modifications that you can do to these to really get the best out of them. And overall, it's a car that once you learn to live with, I think it's really, really grown you in a massive way. In a way that its competitors, like for instance, the Golf R can't. A Golf R, you can jump into the car, drive the car very, very quickly down a B road. It feels fairly well optimized for that task, but does it put the same kind of smile on your face that this does? I'm not so sure. Let's just focus on the drivetrain because that's really what you're paying the money for in one of these M135Is. It's just such a joy to use. First off, it sounds incredible. It's a proper straight six noise. It doesn't sound turbocharged. You hear a bit of wastegate chuff every now and then, which I really like, but it's a very throaty, surprisingly organic sounding straight six engine. It's got that BMW waffle that all the older straight sixes had is really what you're paying the money for, it's what you buy it for over its competitors. It just has that big boy BMW feel to it in a small package. As you said, it's super flexible, it's super fun. The eight-speed gearbox, you've got a massively overdriven eighth gear, but also you've got super short, closely stacked ratios in the lower revs, which means the accelerative punch that this car has is really quite something and it really belies its on-paper statistics. Now I've got a six-speed manual BMW M4 um, as my daily driver and that's a quick car. Honestly, up to about 60, 70, I think this would give it a run for its money mainly because the gearing is so tractable and on top of that, the power is very well optimized for the grip at hand. So you, in the real world, on subpar conditions like this, it's a bit patchy here, it still puts it down, even without the diff, we don't really struggle for traction here. Whereas in the M4, you really need to think about how you use the throttle because the power comes on so strongly that it just spins up, which is really fun, really, really fun, but it's not that quick. As a general proposition, on a kind of average road, you know, you're not gonna get dropped by an M car in this. There are certain advantages with an M car, they've got better temperature management, better brakes, better turn in, and generally they take the task of being driving a bit better, but, for a road car, I mean, I just think this is brilliant. Right, we talked about drivetrain, which is a real highlight in this car. Now let's get to what is potentially a bit of a low light, which is the chassis. Now, the chassis, the inherent base of the chassis is brilliant. It's a rear wheel drive chassis, which is very unique in this class. It's got a lot of components from the 3 Series, which is a fantastic car. It's just a bit shorter. The steering is lovely and precise. It's not particularly feel slim, it's electric, but it's very precise. It's very intuitively geared. And the chassis feels nice when you're just punting along. It's, it, you get that balanced feel to it. You feel that at all speeds, which is really, really lovely. But when you start to push it down a typical UK B road, i.e. one that's got cambers, undulations, bumps, you basically just start to run out of damper travel. It kind of feels a little bit unsettled on the back. And you need to drive around that. It's worse than the five-door models because the three-door models have extra bracing, which the five-door models didn't get. So this is way more composed than I thought it would be because I had a lot of horror stories about these cars. 
and it's still fun it's you can still drive it quickly but it doesn't feel like it's set up to do this and i'm told that it genuinely actually isn't what i'm told is bmw set this car up to be safe at all use cases and what that means is you can drive this car with five adults inside including yourself with luggage in the boot with a full tank of fuel at 150 miles an hour which is the top speed of this car down an autobahn and the suspension won't be sagging and it will still feel safe and composed and it's impossible to have a car that's set up like that and also have it optimized for uk b roads and as a result it basically you get this slightly skittish feel when you really start to load it up and try and get the throttle out of a corner it reveals its open diff it reveals its kind of slightly mismatched spring and damper rates. Does that make it a bad car? No, because the limits and levels are still way higher than what you need for UK road, but it does limit its, you know, real 10 tenths behavior. It doesn't necessarily encourage you to really push it. The key is for what you buy this car for, what it's great for, which is daily driving, mixed use daily driving, motorway driving, city driving with a bit country lane, it's great and you're still able to deploy the engine and use that power whenever you want, which is just so entertaining in itself. And it's just a bit of a muscle car. It's a bit of an old school muscle car. It's like a three liter Capri, you know, or an E21 323. It's rough around the edges. I'd say normally you'd say a car should be slow in, fast out. This car we should kind of go fast in, slow out because the brakes are really good. The turning's really good. It's just the mid corner and the corner exit, which it struggles with. That's where you need to wait a little bit to deploy the power. It's still a lovely steer it's just not a 10 tenths car and that's okay i think that's okay driving position i'm sitting nice and low i've got my h point where i want it to be steering wheels when i want it to be i can bring it out nice and far towards my chest it's obviously um rake and reach adjustable but the pedals are offset to the right which you get used to fairly quickly i think it would annoy me in a manual but with the auto it's fine because you don't really need amazing pedal position in the auto. You've got paddles right here, you've got the selector which to use if you want to use it. I love using the paddles, I think they're really well engineered, well set up paddles. But to be honest, if you just leave the ZF A speed in Sport Plus, it's really good. It kicks down under braking, it's always in the right gear, and when it's not, the kick down is so smooth and the gear ratios are so tightly spaced that you never really feel like it's in the wrong gear. It might not be in the exact right gear, but it's never in the wrong gear, and that's really, really great. The gearbox is a real highlight of this car and it gives it this huge range and flexibility. Brakes are fantastic. Finally, finally, BMW decides to give their F-Series cars proper brakes. So we've got four-pot monoblack calipers on the front and two-pot brakes on the back. But what's the story? What's the real story of this car? I really like this car. I really, really like the M135i. Its bags are fun and I would happily own one. Having to think about how to go down the road, having to drive around that rear suspension, it does make it engaging, it makes you think about it. And it slows you down a bit, which is what you kind of need to enjoy a car on the road. If a car is too capable, you never feel like you're really kind of having to engage it and think about it on the road. This one you do. And that's the story with the M135i. It feels like a bunch of mates got together and just slung this engine in, drove around for it and thought, yeah, this will do. There's something to be said about a car that wears its flaws on its sleeve. And so many of the cars that people get really nostalgic over, Sierra Cosworths, Ford Capris, E3325, they all have major, major flaws in their driving dynamics. And people love them because those flaws allow you to imprint your own story onto the ownership of that car. That's what it's all about. It's about having your own story of the car. It's about engaging with a car and driving it how you want. Now, the other thing is, is that where do we stand with M135i in 2024? You can pick these cars up for under 15 grand at about the same price as an E46 M3. And it's kind of similar performance. Obviously, it's not as composed on the limit as an E46 M3, but it's a really fun car and it's a more usable car. It's a much better daily. It feels like a baby BMW, you know? It reminds me of some of the hot-rodded small cars that have come out over the years, like the Clio V6. It's such a unique, proposition it's a hatchback first it's a perfectly usable fairly economical easy to run hatchback first and yet you get these bags of character on top of that it's like street food with a twist it's like wagyu ramen you know you've got this really relatable base layer and then this luxurious dollop of character on top 
so unique and it's so catchy. And I think it looks great. I love the preface of cars with the kind of slightly eagle-ish tail lights. They've got so much character, so much punch to them. I'm, just, I'm so glad they made this because if they never did, you would have never thought it would be possible. The idea of, of slinging a three litre turbocharged straight six into hatchback is, is as absurd as something like the E60 M5. You know, it's, it's, it's just too much engine for this car and that's such a fun thing to have. It's such a fun way to be excessive. The summary is if you're looking for a hot hatch to just constantly attack B roads in, then you're going to be disappointed with the M135. It's not the car for that. And you can modify it to be like that, but you know, I'd say it's perhaps you're better off saving up for an M car. But to enjoy this car for what it is, which is a really, really brilliant daily, genuinely brilliant daily that, is, that has pretty much no compromise for daily driving, but is also characterful of ton down a B road. It's characterful and fun even on a dual carriageway commute. You can have a little bit of fun exiting around about putting a dynamic control and feeling that real drive feeling without, while still being safe, while still being controllable. That's what most of us use cars for. And for that purpose, the M135i is so well optimized. It's such a great daily driver, perhaps one of the best they ever did. In that sense, it's very similar to the Silco 500 that we drove and loved on this channel. It's a lovely, punchy, small car with a very luxurious engine and this lovely rear wheel drive, spacious driving position that's, in my opinion, best in class. It's perhaps a bit small in the back, perhaps a bit small in the boot, but not super small, it's still perfectly usable. It's got flaws, but they're manageable. They're tangible, it wears them on its sleeve, and it's a very honest car, it's a very honest driving experience, and it's really fun, and more than anything, it's so lovable, it really gets under your skin. I can see why these cars have such cult following, and I think they're gonna be a genuine, bona fide, future classic and i think you should get in now while you can this one's live on shootingbreak.com it's up for auction it's a 10-day auction it's got a really reasonable reserve it's done 31,000 miles it's really hard to find a monthly fiber at that low mileage and it drives like new it really really does it pulls lovely and cleanly there's no whines from the gearbox which you sometimes get on these zf8s there's no knocks from the bushes it's such a lovely example and it's just sounds brilliant listen to that as you're joining a motorway you can enjoy that every single day on your commute if you get one of these i just think that's absolutely brilliant right you're watching shooting break my name's garleb this is our m135i that we've got for sale at the moment feel free to check out the full listing for more information detailed photographs and please do subscribe for future videos more videos coming very soon whether it's bidding browsing or selling the action starts at shootingbreak.com our auction platform is transparent, simple and effective, and trading with us gives you access to exclusive events including track days and meets. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more content on cars that you love.